Welcome to the Formed from Flame exhibition at the Valley Arts Center located at 155 Bell Street in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. My name is Mary Urbis. I am the, the guest curator for this exhibition. In another life, I was the assistant director and the um, gallery exhibition curator here at the Valley Arts Center. So it's my privilege and an honor to return as a guest curator. The idea behind the show, which runs through August 5th, is to feature work created by artists who do unique pieces as well as production items. Um, I tweaked the idea once all the art fairs in the area were starting to close down their shows, canceling their shows, Art by the Falls here in Spring Falls was canceled, so I tweaked the idea just a little bit. Um, I think there's eight, these are 18 regional artists. And the show, like I said, continues through August 5th. The Art Center will be open Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or by appointment. There will be a, additional viewing hours available from 6 to 8 p.m. on Thursdays, again, by appointment. We do encourage private parties. We are offering a BYOB party for 10 guests or less and we're charging a fee of $50 to basically rent out the art center and to celebrate our 50th anniversary here at the Valley Art Center. Um, we're gonna be updating some information on the website, so I, we, we direct you to the website, which is valleyartcenter.org. That, that will give you information about the curator talk, the curator talk I'm going to be giving with some of the selected artists sometime in July at a date to be, to be determined. Um, so we'll pass on information, updates, things like that. So what we're going to do is um, kind of talk up a little bit about everybody. Oh, one last thing, we are following social distancing protocols and all visitors will be required to wear a mask. And we are also creating a virtual store so that you can purchase the pieces online. But if you know me at all, you know that I encourage you to come see the work in person. And like I said, we will be open from 10 to 2, Monday through Thursday, so you can see the work up close in person, because that's always the best way to do it. Okay, we start this exhibition by work by Teresa Yondo. Teresa actually was taught clay here at the Valley Arts Center in the late 90s. Her pieces are electric fired in a kiln, especially her functional work. She works in porcelain and stoneware, but she's been doing some new things, some wood fired pieces. She's been firing with the folks out at the Brinsey Tyrell Institute, which is in Freedom Township, which is kind of like on the outskirts of Ravenna, Kent, Ohio. This is a new work, set of work, this installation of earthly objects, which she called gems, which kind of um, encapsulate land, water, sky, air. And it's inspired by lily ponds, home gardens, and, and wild forests. And this is stonework and porcelain, this installation. It's electric fired and wood fired. And like I said, beside, I've known Teresa for decades. We used to do art shows together. So I was trying to select artists who don't always um, ex exhibit in this area. And again, people who do two kinds of work. It's almost like a duality. I know that's an overused term, but it's artists who can do functional work which then, you know, funds their, it's their bread and butter so that they can create unique one-of-a-kind pieces or limited edition pieces. Okay, so this next grouping is actually a grouping of two different artists. The pieces on the top were done by Roe Clarkin, and these are leaded glass. Roe actually taught clay here again, also at, well, at the turn of the century, late 90s, early 2000s. And that's flanking a piece by Lisa Rushman. Lisa Rushman has a studio in downtown Willoughby in the, in the new Stella Arts building, um, which is, like I said, right on the edge of um, Willoughby. Lisa also, besides doing the glass mosaics, she teaches classes. And in our shop at the Valley Arts Center, she has necklaces that, that um, incorporate ashes of loved ones, so they've become a keepsake. She's also creating these lamp work straw, glass straws that are sustainable. 
And then on the floor here, we've got some stepping stones that are mosaic, and we've got some roses and some St. Francis pieces, which obviously can, be, can go outside and be put in your yard. The next artist is Earl James. He's a Cleveland Institute of Art um, graduate. He has a studio that he shares with his wife, Linda Zamina, who's in the show also, um, located in the East 185th in Cleveland, in Cleveland, East 185th in Nottingham. And again, when I thought of who, who can I invite that's a, that's a premier glass blower in this area is, is, is Earl. I've known him, I don't even remember how we met, but, um, but I just, I like his simple forms. I like the surface decorations. And I do want to thank Sandy Miller for, for donating the use of her lovely pedestals. I'd be lost without my pedestal angels. And okay, for, and again, the, what's nice about with the grouping that Earl gave to us is he gave us two different series, like the, these pieces that are, you're seeing right now that have the surface decoration where it's almost like he's using the surface of the glass as paint in a painterly style. And then he does some very simple classic shapes like this cut glass bowl and um, there's another lidded vessel over there that almost looks like a, a scent bottle or a, or a, you know, a, a special vessel. And then, yeah, the, there's, there's my lovely assistant, Dan, taking the lid off so you can see that it does open and how, and how, the, how the piece is cut, blown and cut and polished. Okay, this next grouping, this is Roe Clarkin again. This is one of her, this is her um, peacock lamp. And she also did a series of necklaces that are leaded glass that follow in the peacock theme and dragonflies. You'll see dragonflies and organic elements throughout the show. And some of her earrings will also be available in the Valley Art Center shop. So again, you will go to the, the website, go to Current, and you'll be able to see um, the marketplace so you could purchase some of the pieces. Now the pieces above her is another piece of Lisa Rushman, and it's glass mosaic, but some of those pieces are, are shards of when she was making special beads, when she does lampwork beads. Some of the pieces, when she incorporates the ashes of loved ones into pieces, those are some of her test pieces. And this piece is called Lucid Dreamer. And I just love the, the combination of the flat work with the three-dimensional pieces and the gems. And of course, there's a skull, a couple skulls stuck in there for good measure. Oh, and then these pieces are, um, rose pieces are on top of a metal shelf created by uh, Jerry Schmidt. We'll talk about a little bit about the, the Schmidt dynasty of sculptors in a minute. Okay, next we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little about, about the Schmidt Sculptor Dynasty. Uh, this is work that includes four generations of, of sculptors in Cleveland. It started with Fred Schmidt, then um, passed on to Jerry Schmidt, then his son Tyler, and then the work of Nathan Nate. And he is, I think that he said, eight years old? 11, 11 years old. So we're, we're trying to promote the work of artists of all different ages. And how cool is it that we have all three generations? And actually, the, a piece of Fred Schmidt is outside in front of the Valley Art Center. And Fred was, was one of the first Cleveland artists to do outdoor sculpture. So this first piece you're seeing here, this is done by um, Nathan, our 11-year-old emerging artist. And then the next one is done by his dad, Tyler Schmidt. And then you've got this great stainless piece on the wall. And I want to thank John Sargent for helping me install the show and doing the lighting, because look at those yum delicious shadows. You know how I'm all about the shadows, and those shadows are just, those are a gift. You couldn't, and when he was working out on lights and I saw what he was doing, I was like, oh man, that looks so cool. And then here we have another piece by Nathan. Nathan's Swedish Smith. 
Oh, and it does say age, age 11 on the label. Thanks, Dan. And then this is another piece of Jerry's. Jerry has a studio in the Waterloo Arts District, and before coronavirus, the first Friday of the month, you could go visit his studio. So hopefully when things open up, you can go visit him again, because his studio is chock full of sculptures. It was a hard decision to figure out which pieces I could select for him to bring in for, for our viewing enjoyment. And like I always say, I encourage you to come see the work, if at all possible. Because seeing it, seeing it is believing it, and that experience is always preferred. are some small disc paperweight forms by Earl James. And they kind of, they flank a few pieces by Carlo Wazello. Her pieces were accepted as part of the jury portion of this exhibition and her pieces are so fire. And they are functional like little watering cans. next pedestal is the Mark Yasinchak pedestal and it's showing different, some of the different things he's been working on. You, you'll see his customary um, embossed, um, embedded textured boxes and his bowls, but he's also doing these new creatures that kind of have these figurative busts, which you'll see on him as Dan goes around the pedestal. And then he's also doing these critters with these crazy skeletal smiles on them. Um, and we already have a red dot, yay. You know, you know how much I love red dots. My favorite call to make is to call an artist to let them know that we sold something. Mark has a studio in the Artcraft Building in Cleveland, and he also opened a new gallery in the East Se sorry, West 78th Street Complex on the west side called Ramparts, and it's on the second floor. And that's, that's they're trying to reopen that third Friday, um, you know, with social distancing and appointments and all this, and hey, it's a new day for everybody. So as long as people are patient, we will work this out because we artists have to keep creating the work and the galleries, I need to keep curating and, and bringing the dynamic work to the public. So we just ask people to be patient, whether you're on our website, if there's any, you know, we might have glitches with things, if you have any problems, we just ask you to contact us directly during normal business hours. Okay, this next piece is done by Laura Lee Hudson. She is also a CIA graduate, and this is enamel. And um, this, this piece has kind of a crazy past to it because it was sent to an enamel show and it got damaged, and they didn't tell her that it got damaged until it was too late to fix it. So this is actually her debut of this piece, which is called Lure, and it's enamel on copper and with sterling silver. And it's actually a, um, I think a set bottle, and Dan is going to show you how you pull up the middle, the flower, and look, there you go. I mean, we just need Charlie Theron or something like that to do a Jador, a Dior commercial for perfume, and we'd, we'd call it a day. Sorry, it's a little pop culture humor. Okay, this next grouping, this is, um, a ceramic bowl and um, tong set, utensil set by Claire Rack. This piece was, was accepted in the jury portion of the exhibition. And it's on top of a horsehair fired pedestal by Gary Devoki. And there's, and that's, um, it's a chino glazed bowl with gold glazed stoneware tongs. Okay. This next piece is kind of a little humor because we stacked the two pedestals of, of Gary DeVoke's and we're sitting here thinking there needs to be something of importance on top of the, of the, the top pedestal. So John Sargent came up with the idea of putting a copper penny on there. So that's our, 
That's our eau de copper. And it kind of brought the colors together, brought it up from the base and of the of the horsehair fired pieces. And um, real quick story about horsehair pieces is you literally fire the piece of ceramic, bring it out when it's red hot, and you lay the horsehair on it and as the 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 carbon in the in the hair transfers onto the um, clay itself. So you can never do two pieces to look the same. They always look a little different. And obviously, these two pieces come apart. The one, the it's two different pedestals that are stacked on top of each other. Oh, and then we're doing a close up on um, Mark Yasinchak's new pieces, his critters, and then the, these new bust pieces. These figurative pieces, which is, un, which is a little different for him. And then we're going to see the, 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 uh, the back side of um, Carla's pieces. And then wonderful surfaces that she creates. And then this, le this piece on the pedestal is another piece by Laurel Lee Hudson, and it talks about the day that the mirror quit. And, you, and so this is cloisonne on sterling. She made the base, she made the casing, and then as you turn around, you see the, you see the cracked mirror. Okay, this first grouping is the, the top piece is done by Laurel Herbold. And I'll talk about her in a, in a quick second. This is one of her We People pieces. And we placed it on top of a sculptural piece by Gary DeVoki that is also, you know, another horsehair piece. This just was an attempt to create us a little bit of a vignette and to give people an idea of how they can mix different artworks together. And hopefully by mixing the artists, it makes it for a more compelling installation of the show because I try and create a visual storyline of what you're seeing. And, and so when you do a, a quick pass, you see color and black and white and then color. And, and so it makes for, to me, it makes for an interesting um, Installation. I, I hope you, have, as viewers, you agree. So next, next we're going to be talking about Gary DeVoki. Gary DeVoki has a studio out in Chesterland. My very first two-person show at, at um, was with him at Pentagon Gallery in Cleveland Heights. He's been doing some um, lighting, and these are really fun because he, he he cuts pieces out so things can go can go on the wall. He does cut undercuts on the bottom, so it, so it goes on the, the tabletops. Um, and these are in his signature black, red, yellow, and white. That is his color palette. And then horsehair. So he doesn't do other color combinations. I've asked. I've tried. And then this grouping is a grouping of his functional work that can be, and you can see more red dots. It's kind of cool to see the red dots with the red pieces. It kind of all goes together. And would like to see as many red dots as possible. Um, so we've got platters, he does um, bowls, he does, this is another lamp, and then he's got this really cool pedestal kind of piece with cutouts and, and little feet on them. And these are totally functional. And I, lo and I love his color palette because this is the color of my kitchen, so I have to save a bunch of red, red, black, yellow, and white items of Gary's in my kitchen. And then this next grouping, I'm so excited for him because this is a grouping of his of these orbs that he has created, these hanging orbs. And all I can tell you is, oh my God, look at those cool shadows! You know, it, it's just so incredible. And the amount of work that he that he it takes him, he'll work on the color, and it does a layer of a color, and then a dot, and a dot, and a dot. So some of these dots have two and three layers of color on them. And we try to kind of make it look like planets in a, in a kind of a constellation. And, but like I said, the way John Sargent and Dan work together to light this, I'm just so happy how it came out. It's just so exciting to see how everything came, came together. Okay, the next grouping is uh, Laurel Herbold. Laurel is um, an artist who has a studio at the 78th Street Studio Complex. She does custom painting and mural work, but she also, what her production work are her We People, 
where she does cards, she does sculptures, she does prints, things like that. But now she's starting to work on a new line of metal work. And so this piece you're looking right now is a sculpture that's put on top of a piece of stone. And then it's on a shelf by Jerry Schmidt. So again, a way to show you how you can use different artists together. But again, here's another example. Look at those yummy shadows. It's just so cool. And then this piece is actually a wind chime with a red dot on it. So yay. Okay, and here's some of her wee people and some of her dangle people and I like how she's taking the, com the composition beyond the constraints of the um, framed piece. And like I said, you can see Laurel's work in her studio at 78th Street during um, their third Friday events. She's, her studio is actually located on the first floor. And then she, we, I also chose some of her sculptures and Oh man, I, did, I just noticed how cool this, the shadows are on the pedestal. So maybe I should just have a call it the shadow show. There's some beautiful um, shadows. And then we got, and then of course, these pieces rock. Of course, they rock, but they rock. <laughs> and Laurel rocks. But I digress. Okay, this next grouping is a grouping of work by George Roby. Unfortunately, we lost George a few years ago, but we wanted to include his work in the show because George started the clay department here at Valley Art Center. So I, for those of you who knew him, he was always good for a joke. And okay, and, and he'd, start, he'd start telling you a joke, but he'd go, ha! And then he'd tell you the joke. And I would never let him leave until he had told me a good joke. And most of them were, were, were so corny, and so queer, but, but uh, you just, if you knew George, when he laughed, his whole body smiled. So we wanted to have his presence here in, in the show. And it, here we go, another red dot, which I'm very happy. So this is just a small grouping of his work. And then the piece that's hanging above it is, was created by, by his son, Ken Roby, who was an area metal worker. And so it's a hook, and we just thought it was kind of interesting because of how it was installed and how it was hung. It's a little off kilter, a little off center, and that's the epitome of the George Roby and Ken Roby lineage. They're, they've got twisted sense of humor, but we love them as artists, and I'm so glad to have them included in this collection of the show. Okay, this next grouping is a grouping by Linda Zamina. Linda is also a CIA graduate. Linda is... Okay, this next grouping is, is created by Linda Zanina. Linda is also a CIA graduate. Um, she ha operates a hot class studio in the East 185th and Nottingham area in Cleveland with Earl James, and you saw Earl James' work earlier. So these are some of her more of her show pieces, her sculptural pieces, her sandblasted pieces. And I and the this beautiful blue piece I believe is, is a cast piece. So like I said, I'm just really happy that some I was able to select artists who who I could show you that they do unique pieces, but then you get to see what they, their bread and butter, what they what supports them so that they can have the money to do this. And, and the hope is, with all this downtime, all these artists are having, that they'll be able to create some new pieces. Okay, so now, so here are some some of her lower price point, you know, just um, vases. These are um, with the different colors, you know, and she does. And again, you can visit her studio. A lot of these people you can make appointments to visit their studios. I just love the, the color quality. With now these vases that we're showing right now, these bud vases actually have um, gold foil inclusions in them, which kind of adds to the to the drama drama of the piece of the blown glass. And then we have a series of three scent bottles that Linda created. I think Dan's going to pull up one of the stoppers so you can see. We've got them taped for, for your security. There we go. Look at how elegant they are. Look how beautiful. 
beautiful they are. And these are sitting on another shelf of Jerry Schmidt, another metal shelf. But again, it's just a way to show you that you can mix artists, and especially you can mix the, the media, something, you know, the, the sensualness of, of blown glass in contrast to the hard edge of metal that has to be cut and torched and forged. Okay, this next grouping is done by Painsville artist Sandy Miller. Sandy Miller also taught clay here back in the day, at the end of the 90s. And she, oh my gosh, there's nothing that this girl doesn't do. She's a gardener, she blocks, she grows vegetables, but she does incredible work, beautiful work. Now this is a piece um, of smoked and raccoon fired clay. And then what she does is she puts these, these metal ribbings, which I believe are from fishing lures, and she weaves the necks of these pieces to make them into these elegant combinations of clay and fiber. The piece on the wall is another similar piece with a little bit of, of clay, a little bit of metal, a little bit of everything, a mixed media piece. And then we've got this grouping of her, what she's been doing now, her decal pieces, and these are totally functional. Um, she's got the pieces with the ginkgos and the, and the bees, which is a, a very, which is a, favorite, um, I can't think of the word, motif, thank you, <laughs> thank you Dan. Um, the piece in the back is kind of cool because it's a um, potter's lunch box because it's got the different bowls, it's got a cup for tea and it comes with the um, chopsticks and she's so into the the tie downs and oh if you look at the um the handles on the teapot and on the, the basket form that those you know she likes to in, incorporate textile elements into her pieces and then we have um another trio of pieces of her she's we've got a smoked and woven piece with the with the woven neck to it. We have a Sager fire piece in this yellow coloring with a hand woven top which again another red dot. We love those red dots. And then in the back is a horsehair fire piece and I described a few minutes ago how those were created. So again with these pieces, these unique pieces especially when it's raccoon fired or smoked fired you never get the same two surfaces and it's always a gift when you open the kiln at the end of a fire and you see what um, the kiln gods have allowed. And again, we've got the beading and, and all the other elements. Again, this is another example where you need to come in. If you can, make the time to come in to see the work in person. Okay, we have two more pieces by Lisa Rushman. These are glass mosaic. And again, Lisa has a studio in the same building as Stella Arts Gallery in downtown Willoughby. They just moved in, they've just opened up, and a lot of these studios, a lot of these gal galleries are offering visits by appointment. They are, they are enforcing, you know, you wearing masks, social distancing, but there still are opportunities for you to get out there and see the work in person. Because I can't tell, I can't stress enough the, the, the different experience you get when you get to see the work. In per, in, up close and in person. Okay, now this next grouping is done by Michael Makula, and um, this he's a, also a CIA graduate. And I met Michael years ago because he was one of my assistants when we worked at Sylvia Almonds in American Crafts Gallery. So again, it, I, it's been kind of fun to watch Michael's work evolve over the years and how he's doing these architectural accents and how he creates these these modular pieces that are then cast glass and then puts them together kind of like as a collage with different colors, different textures and, and different details. And some of these pieces like what you're seeing right now are, um, you know, functional pieces. This one's called Outside In and Emerald Green, 
emerald green and some of these are you know blown into molds and then finished off and it's just there's just something about glass and the color and the clarity that is just so beautiful and then the textures that he's able to um, incorporate into his pieces and these pieces you're looking at these are cube cup luminaires you can put candles in them you could put water and float a, float a flower in it there's all different ways you can make these functional if you, if you feel the need to make them functional and again the way these pieces are lit thank you again dan and, and john because you know when you light something the right way it just it just pops it just sparkles and here's his last the last show piece of his called Quarry Pond. Okay, our next grouping is a grouping by Lisa Kenyon. She's one of the founding members of the Studio Foundry, which is in the Midtown, Midtown Corridor area of Cleveland. These pieces are bronze, and, and she kind of follows a nature theme. She's got um, one that's called night, you know, swamp music. She's got the other one along the river. There's a piece that's coming up that's a cast bronze with a wood base, which is called Butterfly Woman. So there's not a lot of sculptors doing some of these large scale casts, so it's kind of nice to be able to promote some sculptors in this show, some sculptors you, you might not normally have the opportunity to see their work. And this one she's incorporating some floral and fauna with a, with a jaguar motif. And then this owl woman, I chose this one because it kind of picked up on the um, textures that Mike McCoola was using in some of his pieces. Again, that's when I designed the installation, that's why I put certain pieces near each other, groups near each other, because sometimes there are literally visual threads that kind of go, to, you know, go from um, grouping to grouping, from, from concept to concept. And then we have a jaguar sconce of hers, where you could use the, the bottom part as a water bowl if you wanted. And I'm like, hey, there's a part of me that thinks this would be so cool if it was set up like as a fountain and the water was coming out of his mouth. But maybe another piece, maybe in the future. And this is a cast bronze piece. And then we have another piece called Sentience. Okay, we're coming up on the Grand Inquisitor, a sculpture created by Jerry Schmidt using all kinds of different elements and he's got some molds from teeth, he's got a, a anvil hammer, he's got a bell on the top, he's got a crazy poker. Again, it, it's kind of fun how we kind of collage it all together and Dan's going to make it move so you can see how he moves and kind of the comical element and the, the eyeballs wiggle a little bit. Like I said, he's Jerry's second generation out of four generations of sculptors. called Mother Earth. This is a brand new piece for her. She's been actually working with Jerry Schmidt in the studio to cut out the, the pieces and do the engraving in there. And if you look to, to the back of the piece, it, it kind of um, encapsulates the whole chakra idea. There's a walk that comes with this, and the idea is to either make it into a planter or a fire pit. And she's got her, her wee people along the border. And this is meant to be out to be put outside. And if you 
go on her webpage, and we'll try and share it too. She has a she took a video of her actually, cut, you know, cutting the piece out and engraving some of the motifs in there. So, so please check our uh, event page on Facebook because we're going to be posting um, this video. Obviously, if you're seeing it, I guess that doesn't matter. But we're also going to be updating the event page and the website with. When we do the curator talk that we'll be planning in July, if there's any updates on the store, any of that. But like I said, if you have any questions or concerns, you can call us during the day, 10 to, between 10 and 2 p.m., 440-247-7507, or visit valleyartcenter.org. Okay, we're outside of the Valley Art Center right now, and first you're seeing a piece by uh, Fred Schmidt. Like I said, we have four generations of, Fred, of Schmidt sculptures in the show. We have this, oh, this piece is not for sale. It is part of the collection of the Valley Art Center. The next piece is called Slingshot. We apologize for the outside noise, but cars are driving past us. We're doing the best that we can, so please be patient. This is Slingshot done by Jerry Schmidt. It's stainless and on a painted metal base. And then the last piece is the Chakras of Steel, and he's been working on the finish on it. He can, it, right now it's, Rusting a little bit, but it can be ru it can rust and it can it can be sealed to keep the patina on the outdoor sculpture. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Sorry for all the feedback earlier with this um, being outside with the cars driving by. Please stop by the Art Center, 155 Bell Street, and it's just outside the downtown of Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Come see the show. Come support the artists. Support the Art Center because the percentage of the sales will go to support the Art Center and we are working on the celebration of our 50th year here. So thanks for coming along and again, check the website for updated information. You know, we're, we're, we're trying. This is all new to us as far as the virtual store and, and the distancing, all that. So hopefully we'll see you in the, in the near future. Thanks a lot. Bye.